Hey, welcome back to Ultra Life Today. We are so delighted you're joining us for this second week where we're talking, uh, trying to take a deep dive, but having a lot of fun doing it, Adam, in the uh, arena of plant bioactive compounds, polyphenolics, but specifically we're talking about quercetin. Um, you mentioned that um, antioxidant properties, you mentioned that it has this unique ability to chelate, which means to bind to heavy metals in the body and activate them. Then we moved into this idea of ligands or cell messaging uh, last week. So pick us up where you left off because you were trying to explain to me how quercetin interacts with a cell yeah. and, and yep. what's yep. going yep. on yep. there yep. when that happens. So uh, quercetin, uh, as more importantly, I mean, the antioxidant, great. The heavy metal chelation, great. Um, fantastic. Where, fantastic. Fantastic. Anyway. Where what we want is to know the biological domain of quercetin. That, you know, plants make quercetin because they use it for a biological function inside of the plant biology. Does it protect them somehow? I don't. I You know what? I don't know. Does it make I bugs don't, stay I, away? I, I don't know. I wish I knew. I don't know. I okay. don't know. No, those tend to be more the uh, terpenes, okay. right? Ter terpenes are the, that that the aromatic plant. components. Okay. Yeah. Cur the the polyphenols tend to be more functional domains. So, uh, quercetin interacts with our immune system. It actually affects immune signaling in a profound way, but most specifically, it affects um, something called eosinophils. Eosinophils are a class of immune cell in our body that are primarily responsible for two different kinds of immune responses. The first immune response is something we're really familiar with. It's the allergic response. Okay. So, like, so glad you're talking about that because I've heard rumors that quercetin has a unique ability to help in that. So it, keep going. Yeah, that's, keep going. I mean, that's where the, the, the big promise of quercetin is that it, it, since it has a unique domains that affect eosinophils, it will prevent the activation of eosinophils. So act, activated eosinophils are immune cells that are causing an inflammation reaction. So if reaction. the pollen count is high in the air and I'm one of those people and I go outside and I'm breathing it, you're saying it's activating eosinophils, and those are creating an inflammatory response that's probably going to take me down a negative yeah, trail. Yeah, an activated eosinophil starts to spill out um, histamines into the tissues. Histamines are another cellular messenger that causes immune cells to flood into the space. A histamine dump is like calling out the National Guard. Not fun. Well... I mean, we've all experienced it. Right. You've experienced an allergic reaction. Yeah, to, to toxic mold. You're right. right. And your 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 nose stuffs up almost immediately. Things start to swell. You can get hives. Hives oh, yeah. is an is an allergic reaction in your skin. You can have asthma, which is an allergic reaction manifesting in your lungs. Um, you can have eosinophilic reactions in your in your esophagus, in your stomach, in your intestines. Yeah, we've heard about people's throat closing up from reactions to different things, right. peanut allergies, that kind well, of thing. Well, yeah, you, you can stop breathing because of it. Right. Uh, but things like ulcerative colitis is considered to be, get this, it is an, an eosinophilic response that's happening in the tissues wow. inside of your intestines. Um, it's very similar to eczema. Eczema in the skin and different kinds of manifestations, uh, eosinophilic manifestations in other parts of the body are the kind of the same thing. Eczema is an eosinophilic reaction happening on the skin. So is quercetin actually mitigating this inflammatory response that's taking place from eosinophils? That is, you know, I don't, unfortunately, I don't know the exact mechanism of action, which okay. ligand that quercetin is attaching, but the research has is, is definitive that quercetin is a powerful mitigator of eosinophil activation. So if you have a lot of, if you have quercetin soluble in your body, 
it will dampen the activation signal of an eosinophil. Whoops, that's bouncy. So I just want to throw out something. Is there such a thing as a synergistic effect when it comes to some of these compounds? Because oh, yeah. I think about... Oh, yeah. Baby. I mean, I think about... I love synergy. Okay. So, <laughs> you know, we, we have our awesome QC department over there at our 25,000 square foot farm and manufacturing facility. And when you, you say it that way, it sounds you know, amazing. It's pretty sexy, isn't yeah. it? And, and, and you, are the, you are the guy that is such a in-your-head innovative guy and you're constantly yeah. constantly telling Stella or other people over there, hey, I want you to do this and these mysterious packages of powders are coming in <laughs> and you're, you're shipping them over yeah. there and uh, and they're doing things it with sounds them. Sounds like it's something and, different, but and, it isn't. And, and then, <laughs> all right, well, then I'll sit down with you, you know, and I'll like, well, what's, what's that? that? And you're like, oh, I had Stella and Jared look at that and guess what? It works with our technology, I, and I, I get know. really excited. So you get really excited about combining these things together. So is there really such a thing as synergy where one plus one can equal three? Let's, you, oh. let's say you take curcumin, oh, wow. you take quercetin, you take berberine, you put them all together, in, or what in, happens? In fact... It happens in the drug world, right? Uh, they use know, the drug drugs to, kinda, to try no, to create synergy uh, now. You know what? They try. Drug companies, no, they actually don't try. But doctors do. I mean, yes. that, that's what I'm saying. Yes. Yeah. In, in COVID, you had so many different doctors coming out they of the talk woodwork. About, they talk that about the drug cocktail. They're needing things. a cocktail exactly. approach. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And, this, you know, the reason that we. So talk, is there a cocktail approach in natural supplements? There is. Oh, there should cool. be. Excuse me. Human biology is like trying to stop traffic from an island when there's three bridges off that island. And so uh, the pharmaceutical approach is, well, we're just going to, we're going to block this one bridge. That's going to stop the traffic. Does it stop the traffic? Yeah, we're all looking at our GPS and it's going, it'll save me 10 minutes if I take this exit. Yeah. The, uh, it might be, you know, the <laughs> one, it might be a one way bridge that you only go on because you, it's kind of rickety. It's a singing bridge. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> one of those kind of bridges. Does it block the? Does it keep the traffic from getting off the island? No. no. The biology just goes. Oh, that's blocked. Slow I'm going to go around. Down. May slow some things. Opens down. up entirely new channels. Right. You know, we find out that there's a subterranean passage that nobody knew about. <laughs> right. But that's what cell. That's what happens in our cells. Um, pharmaceuticals try to, but they can block one thing, and. Honestly, pharmaceuticals work because they are effective in some regards. Quercetin is one of those compounds. We use it in our oncology products with yep. some other compounds because quercetin affects uh, a number of different metabolic pathways in the cell. It affects NERF2. It affects... Is it an AMPK guy? Uh, no. No. Okay. No. No. It is no, no. Actually, no. It is. I'm, really? I'm so sorry. It okay. does affect glucose metabolism. It does, right. but it also affects a number of other pathways: NERF two, AMPK, um, uh, mTOR, mTOR, yeah, and um, NF kappa beta indirectly. Okay. Ooh, in MAP NF kinase. kappa beta. That's one not of my as favorite strong ones as say. NF kappa beta. Not as strong as curcumin. But all you know, most people don't know what those different secret codes are those are different like um side streets inside the cell where certain things happen and so quercetin if it can get in the cell it can affect different parts of the human biology and so that's why in our cancer products we combine quercetin and curcumin and also in a product we have called ultra defense we use curcumin and quercetin and Boswellia, olive leaf extract, and olive, vitamin no, D3, no, and zinc. Right. Yeah, we no use Boswellia. all of those in order to affect the inflammation pathway, which has to do with activation of eosinophils, activation of, of uh, white blood cells, monocytes, and other uh, immune cells that are in the body. Quercetin has a unique ability to affect those things. And in fact, quercetin has been kind of touted as nature's answer to allergies except it doesn't get into the body it it's right. and it gets it in its native form it's a crystal it's insoluble it won't absorb thus why the lps technology is so important we make a standalone curcumin product 
We also make a standalone quercetin product called Ultra Quercetin. Yeah. It's available on our website. Uh, we also have a couple of other of products that include quercetin in it. You know, I, I have to admit, when I take quercetin, I don't feel anything. But I'm not dealing with allergies. I'm with you on that as well, but I have never dealt with allergies either. So, yeah. so, so I've so heard people have... report to me that but that have severe, severe, severe kinds of uh, allergic things. And they tell me that the ultra quercetin, especially the ultra defense, man, I have people that beg me to send them ultra defense. We, I have one gal, she's a PhD at Rutgers University. She travels overseas all the time. She just texted me last night, send me the quercetin in the ultra defense. I'm going over to Thailand for a month and I'll, I'll be sick as a dog if I don't have it. Right. You know, um, so to, in a roundabout way, you have answered the question related to synergy and putting things together. And we kind of, we, we wound up at ultra defense where we do throw certain things together. Yeah, one plus one doesn't equal two in, in these cases. One plus one equals 10 or five. So just a quick recap. We started off talking about antioxidant potential of quercetin, if you can get it in the bloodstream. We went on to talk about chelation. We went on to talk about how it creates a unique ability of these cells to signal in the cytokine, uh, chemokine space um, and be able to mitigate a response in the body related to inflammation, allergic responses, things like that. Yeah, so, so the body's creating these something's happening, right? You have a, so the other thing that eosinophils do, so we talked about this, and you reminded me, eosinophils are responsible for allergies. They're also responsible for the parasite response. So we don't deal with a lot of parasites here in the Western world. Um, I would actually completely disagree. I would say they're like the hidden illness that nobody knows they're dealing with, right. and they are responsible. Talk to Dr. Wyndham and other right, doctors right, that we right, in, right, interact, right. and they'll but say, hey, not it is as, a big deal. Okay, but, but you're right. It's not, not as to much the point. As, yes. as Africa or India. Yeah, it's not like river blindness no. you know, in Africa. No. You're right. You're Thank, right. Thankfully. Yes. Right? It is believed that allergies that we experience in America especially is because we have a bored immune system. Our eosinophil system is designed to be responsive. It wants to like, it's looking for the parasites. So it really is a no pain, no gain type principle with our immune system. When it is attacked by something, it actually gets stronger and it needs to kind of stay revved up and active, right? Looking for a fight. So you don't give it something to respond to. It's kind of like it's it's getting kind of itchy. It's dancing around. And then it gets a signal that maybe it shouldn't respond to, but it's like, well, I got nothing else to go on. I'm going to do this. All right. Watch out, folks. Hey, we are so grateful that you have uh, joined us for this particular segment of Ultra Life today. This is week two. It's this third one. We've got another one that's going to be coming up. You're going to enjoy it. We're going to kind of wrap up. Uh, we're going to wrap up you better enjoy it. I and mean, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, play a trick on Adam and uh-oh. try to stump the inventor, innovator, CEO, research dude sitting over here on my left. Uh, I'm Josh Pelly. This is Adam Payne. This is Ultra Life Today. Find us where you like podcasts. Give us a five-star rating and uh, subscribe. Share. Our mission is to take nature's most beloved botanicals, and enhance them with our liquid protein scaffold technology. This helps it reach your cells faster and better. With exponentially enhanced bioavailability, you'll feel better every day. Ultra Botanica, the feel-good curcumin. Hey, welcome back to Ultra Life Today. I am Josh Bell, you're one of your hosts, and I'm hanging out with this guy. Adam Payne here. We're in our fourth segment talking about quercetin. We quercetin. are talking about quercetin. So real quickly, because uh, on the break here, um, our uh, one of our uh, sound producer guys, Thomas, mentioned different foods. Look, 
go to the internet and simply look up foods that contain quercetin because I couldn't even put it in my notes. It was so very long. But then there's going to be some superstars like onions in the mix there. I can't remember one of the other ones, but it is cool as well. And this is me getting my plug in, Adam, for organic foods. Yeah. This was a really, to me, this was like a golden nugget. When they compared blood concentrations of quercetin Kurt, after people Kurt. ate tomatoes, yeah. they tested them against farm-grown tomatoes versus organic, and guess what? 79% more quercetin was present, not only in those, but in the bloodstream. So nature has uh, a beautiful way of absorption, right? You mean natural f organic produce? Egg organic, not, that's right. Not as the compared to the just genomic the, the modified. Yeah, just a, as a maybe. I, I guess it would be a new. Maybe. it would be a new fun thing to call it big pharma, but just spell it with big P F A R. <laughs> big food is what people normally say. Anyway, so um, antioxidant potential. Um, uh, chelation potential, so I, unique I had, interaction, I had a, inflammation, I had a, and you my, were my first, so, so my first wife in the 80s, she was from overseas, and uh, I brought her to the United States. We spent our first couple of years in the United States. I went to graduate school, and she was, first of all, overwhelmed and surprised by the the amount of food that we have here in America. And it's then plentiful. She, yeah, and then she was astonished at how unflavorful it was, yeah. lacking flavor. Horrifying. Yeah. And, Nothing you know, like so when I was a kid. Yeah, I'm not, sadly, uh, not even the yeah. organic tastes that way. You know, unless I grow it in my own backyard. Our, our taste buds do degrade over time, Josh. I don't believe it. It does. Yeah, yeah. sorry. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. I'm tuning in. So up. you were gonna you were going to challenge me with kind of a to stump the inventor question. I did. I thought it was so interesting because, and this is something that you've actually taught me about in the past. But you, so you're going to stump me with something that I taught you. Well, because you may not know it applies to quercetin, uh, right? So I'm trying to give drop okay. some hints here. Drop right. some hints. I'm wait, I'm so the, one of the most prominent things they mentioned about quercetin as one of its unique mechanisms of action in the body is the way it influences something related to detoxing. You want to guess what it might be? Detoxing. Liver health? Phase to Ooh, detoxification. I knew you picked okay, up Okay, but we already that. sort of talked about this phase two. We didn't mention it by name because, no. you know, we have another product, Ultra Brock, you know, has this beautiful sulforaphane in it. It elevates glutathione naturally, and it's a phenomenal. You know, what reminds, is phase two enzyme detoxification? It reminds me of those kind of people movie skits know. where people are like, you know, it's like that phase, and they're like, they don't know what the words are, but they <laughs> pretend that they know it. Well, that's phase why I'm two, doing that. Right. I'm now, like, phase what two in the heck is it? So there's, there, guess what? There's phase one detoxification. No way. Yeah. Is there a phase three? And no. Oh, okay. No, sorry. All right. So anyway, phase two. Well, you know, there might be, but we, they, we only talk about phase one and phase two. And they can, they typically, they're in balance. And this is why getting a good functional doctor is super critical important for super most of important. us because they're one of their well, good functional doctor. One of the first things that they're going to do is look at your phase one, phase two balance. Some of us can be phase one heavy and phase two light, which means we'll accumulate phase two toxins because they're not processed as fast as our body gets them through phase one. So toxins go through phase one, then they go through phase two, and then they're eliminated. Is the Nerf, So phase two has to do with environmental toxins a lot. Um, and uh, in some of us, we can be phase two deficient. And what that means is that we will accumulate toxins. NRF2, NRF2 as we like to call it, is one of those um, genetic uh, pathways in the DNA and in the cell that if we activate it, it activates the whole phase two detoxification process. Now, are you saying that primarily phase two toxicity comes from airborne pollutants well no it, it well it it has it being inefficient on phase two means that environmental toxicity will to yeah will gotcha. will accumulate in the body now what happens when you're talking phase two? Where does the detoxification process take place? Is it primarily in the liver? Is it something that happens all over the body? Um, my understanding is that each cell has its own 
NRF2. Unique pa- house cleaning house ability. Cleaning, yeah. Nice. So just like the um, exhaust system in the mitochondria creating oxidative stress by the accumulation Shooting of free radicals, the, yep. right? Other environmental toxins can accumulate in the cell, especially if we have a phase disbalance. We could be strong phase one and weak phase two. We could be weak phase one and strong phase two, which means you're going to still accumulate a lot of toxins, but until you get your phase one cleansing up, your body's going to accumulate a lot of different free radical issues. Okay. Now I'm going to ask you something. It's like we would want to phone a friend, but we don't have time. How do you boost your phase one? I don't know. Okay. I don't see. That's why we need Keith Bishop and Deanna Wyndham here to say, if you eat these things, what would you you do? They go to, they go a lot to a lot more schooling. Well, anyway, anyway, so, but obviously quercetin affects. Yes. And so I would think that the foods that are quercetin rich are probably going to help elevate your phase two game. They will, they will help to do that. And so we have, we know uh, curcumin, is right. a powerful activator of NERF2. Nerf two. Two. Yep. Quercetin is a powerful activator of NRF2, NERF2. And uh, broccoli seed extract right. is, a profil, pro, is a powerful activator of NERF2. Right. Yeah. And so that's we, we activate that. If you're deficient or you need that extra booth, boost, a lot, you know, I recommend... And I'm not a clinical nutritionist, so I have no clinical basis for making this recommendation. But you and I both kind of recommend people once or twice a year doing a good phase two detoxification. I do. I just think, you know, the more we learn about environmental exposure, the more we learn about toxicity in food supply, in water supply, the things we're around, chemicals, you know, again, airborne type things. It's scary, actually. It is all around us. It, It makes me really... I'm blown away by the way God has designed our body to be able to stay well. I'm, I, it shocks me that people are still living so I, into their 80s and 90s and they're I, healthy. You know, you know, you you blew my mind a couple months ago. You did. I can't wait to hear what it was. Uh, this was was all, it a good thing? Yeah. Okay, good. You're, and you're, you're going to go, oh, yeah. Um, you told me that there's only a couple of clean um, oils that are out oh. there. And it, this is such a sad state of affairs. You know, and when I when I started to look into it... And when we're it, talking about oils, we're talking about oils that one would use in cooking or take, or such eating. as olive oil, okay? And, when, and when, you, when you shared this with me, I was more than a little bit astonished. I, I was so perturbed when I found out, and I said, that cannot uh, be true. What, I'm, what, what is, Adam is but referencing it is... True. Yes, yeah, and when, I, <laughs> and when I mentioned it, I think so, we were so in the presence of some doctors. Let's get, and it just uh, shot, and, and they were like, it really is true, or no, we were talking to Keith Bishop, I believe. Yeah, at the time. yeah. Keith was yes. there. Keith was like, rah, 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 rah. right. Yeah, right. Exactly. Keith is the way that Keith does that, <laughs> yeah, right? He's a compendium. <laughs> oh my gosh, what a lovely guy! I wish I could but, keep a copy so, of Keith but, around. But, but, all but the you time. held me back there. Where, why were you holding me back? As it related to these oils, what were you going to say? Uh, it's just it blew my mind, Josh. I mean, I had no idea that these oils, these dietary oils that we take in on a lot. That I mean, we I cook with it. I put so it in salads. I, I cook, yep. I cook with foods that Heck, half of us drink them and take, take it by the tablespoon. Well, I, you know, we use, uh, organic MC, coconut based MCT oil right. for anything in ultra botanica, right. which I was glad to learn is actually not a bad oil. For, yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, no, no. but, but you shared, but you shared with me that most of these, the big uh, problem cooking is oils olive is, oil. The big yeah, problem so, is olive oil. So talk oil. to me about this. It's such a bizarre thing, and, and what a fun detour to, to do. And we've got about four minutes left, so okay. we'll come back to Cursetin and wrap it up. But there is such a thing, if you can believe this, of the olive oil cartel. <laughs> now, keep in mind, well, you know, we've it, seen it's plenty a of kind movies. of a thing down in Sicily there. Yo, Yo. right? So we've seen movies, and, uh, and we have so many friends and Italian brothers and sisters around the world. But we do know there's an evil element that exists within all cultures, right? And we happen to know, we've seen The Godfather and other movies. So Believe it or not, they are controlling- Sicilian mafia? They are controlling olive oil. And what they're doing is they're blending in other oils like rapeseed oil and other oils. And some big companies have gone out and tested all these olive oils that are supposed to be organic and special and perfect and wonderful. And they found that they're contaminated- With what? With- 
rapeseed oil and canola uh, oil. So they'll put, they'll, they'll put some me. terpenes in there to make it smell like olive oil. You're they'll put a little of olive oil in there. You're Quit kidding it. me. Quit it. <laughs> really? I mean, yes. seriously. Yeah. And so it's very, very difficult to be able to find. So there's only a couple of different countries that are single source origin countries that are putting out olive oil so that this you is, know from start this to also finish blew my is good. Mind. Tunisia. Tunisia. Why, yeah. when, what do I look for that's made in Tunisia? Where is Tunisia? It's like south of Morocco, right? Yeah. It's in Africa. Right. And it's good. Yeah. Tunisian olive yeah. oil. Yeah. Well, again, now, again, I don't know what. I, so as, as soon as somebody hears this, they're going to go start adulterating the, uh, the olive but oil. But I started to take a look. So I, I went into Sam's the other day and I looked at the olive oil that they said. And, yeah. and one of the bottles was like single source blend from Tunisia and Cyprus. There you and go. I thought, well, that's why they're putting these things on the label these days. Really? Because it's begun to be kind of a crisis. Wow. Yeah. So, okay. so to, olive oil is okay. And then avocado oil is okay. Yes. Well, I mean, there's a variety of different oils oils out there that are good and, and coconut oil man i mean good organic coconut yum, yum, oil yum. is, is rocking yeah yep. and they're not adulterating that yet because i don't think we they don't have allow a, adultery i don't yet. think they have a big mafia element where they grow coconuts oh, i just don't yeah, know yeah. okay about a minute and a half left before Let's we wind up, up this last then. segment you know you mentioned some good things uh, look up on the internet quercetin and the foods that you can eat that are very high in it and it'll even tell you which portion of that particular vegetable or that fruit that you may eat that is actually the best part to consume to get high levels of quercetin in your body. We're kind of, we have bragging rights here at Ultra Botanica and it's really simple. There's a unique technology that was created not a mile and a half from here through Oklahoma Medical Research Foundation, University of Oklahoma Health Sciences Center. Adam has lots of friends still over there. They're working and doing research on our Onco products that we use to help support the immune system for individuals that are dealing with active cancers. We're a research-based company. We're a CGMP company. We've been visited by the FD. We're going to do a, a a little teaser for next week. We're going to do a little CGMP uh, down and dirty show of 30 minutes, two segments there that you're going to really, really enjoy. And uh, we're going to talk about what is a CGMP facility? Why would the FDA inspect facilities and what horrors do they find when they're there? Ooh. So in, we're going to read some warning letters. Well, we're going to talk about some warning. I could out some people. I'm not going to do that. I don't want it to. I don't want to come back to haunt us. Yeah. But anyway, so again, I've been hanging out with this guy Adam Payne today. He's the CEO of Ultra Botanica. Super humble guy. Very, in, very much of an innovator. It's one of the things I love about him. He's constantly looking for the new, the 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 new thing that will help you live your ultra life today. Wherever you find podcasts, look us up, um, go to our YouTube channel, subscribe, share. We love you. We appreciate you. We're going to be back. Um, hopefully the next one you're going to hear is going to be on how do you manufacture a dietary supplement and do it right and what sets us apart from the rest. I'm Josh Bellew. I'm Adam Payne. Thanks for joining us here at Ultra Life Today. Go live your ultra life today. <laughs>